Hey guys, Richard Holder here and welcome to the channel. Who wants to see a video about installing stack injection on a small block Chevy? Plus you get to see me argue with me about carburetors. In this video, we're going to do a back to back comparison, comparing a dual plane and carbureted induction system on a mildly modified small block Chevy with an individual runner stack injection from the guys at Speedmaster. Now we know the stack injection looks awesome, but the real question is, does it add any power? To illustrate how well these individual runner downdraft stack injections work, we're going to run one first on a small block 350 Chevy and then also on a small block Ford. So starting with the 350, this was basically a used junkyard crate motor, at least the short block portion of it. It had been previously upgraded with a set of RHS aluminum heads and a healthier camshaft. Because the motor originally came equipped with a hydraulic roller, we replaced this with another hydraulic roller from the guys at Comp Cams. The camshaft that we installed in there was an XR276HR hydraulic roller cam. It was a 502-510 lift split a 224 to 30 degree duration split and 110 degree lobe separation angle. We reused the factory hydraulic roller lifters in this application and then we equipped this. We had previously removed all of the factory EFI stuff from the Vortec motor and replaced it with a dual plane carbureted intake manifold. In this case it was an Edelbrock RPM air gap. We also replaced obviously all the injectors and the EFI stuff with a simple carburetor. In this case it was a Holley 650 HP and we also used an MSD distributor, but because we use the small 650 HP carburetor, let's hear from the internet and see what they think about the carburetor choice. Come on, bro, 650? Are you kidding me? This ain't no six cylinders of V8 small block Chevy 350. He's at least a 750. You're crazy, man. 750? Who are you trying to kid, man? Do you even know what the definition of a step up is? You don't step up from a 650 to a 750. You're gonna step up, step up big, my friend. Step from a 650 to an 850, man. That's the only way to go. Listen, if you're going to be upgrading the carburetor, I said upgrade 650 to 750, 750 to 850. That's not upgrading. You're going to upgrade, upgrade all the way. Don't go 6, don't go 7, go 8, man. Go all the way. If you're going to put a 4150 carburetor on this, you better put a 950. Don't even get me started on dominators. Now that we've satisfied all those knuckleheads on the internet about the carburetor, in reality, a 650 carburetor is more than enough for this power output. But in typical small block Chevy, modified small block Chevy fashion, we are up near 400 horsepower with our modified co combination. We had the Vortec basic short block, and who knows how many miles it has. And it seemed like it was still running good. But with the heads, cam, and intake, our combination, and we also ran inch and three quarter long tube headers. We run a Mazir electric water pump on the front of it, so no accessories. All of that stuff had long since been removed. And we ran this thing with uh, optimized timing, and we even did jetting, obviously, to optimize the air fuel, although it didn't really take very much. Just taking the carburetor and setting it on there actually worked fairly well. I think we only needed to change the jetting by two or three jets. So it worked out fairly well, but this thing made 385 horsepower and 386 foot-pounds of torque. So the combination worked out fairly well, even in carbureted trim, and it had good torque, which we would expect from a dual-plane combination, and it made decent power out of the top. We ran out to 6,100 RPM. But here's what happened when we put our stack injection on, and in this case, this came from the guys at Speedmaster, and it was their small-block Chevy setup. You can take a look here, and we'll kind of show you what's going on. Here's our power output. Now, the stack injection, in addition to looking awesome, you could see polished stuff, individual stacks, radius air horns. It had a center pivot linkage and all that stuff. So this thing actually worked out fairly well since it looks very cool. And obviously, in terms of airflow, it's not even close comparing the airflow potential of the stack injection to the um, dual plane intake manifold. But really, this isn't all just about airflow. It isn't, it, it isn't like, hey, let's just make a big opening and we can flow a ton of air and we can make a lot more power. That's not really what's happening here. As we see, we gain pow power by putting this stack injection on there. We gain power from 36 or 3700 RPM all the way up. This thing equipped with a stack injection made right at 400 horsepower, 401 and torque was 402 foot-pounds of torque. So just like it was with the carbureted combination, it basically made the same horsepower as it did torque. And what we liked is that we got a good solid gain through most of the RPM range, as we said, from 36 or 3700 RPM all the way out past 6000 RPM. So getting 
you know, a bunch of peak power is good, but getting more power everywhere, and obviously the combination of getting more power and having it look this good, obviously is just kind of icing on the cake. There are some things to think about when you're talking about maybe putting on one of these systems. Most guys would put these systems on because they look awesome, and let's face it, they do. If you pop the hood on something like this, or if it's sticking out the hood, which is probably even better, but if you pop the hood and find something like this, instead of your traditional carburetor, <laughs> despite what size carburetor you have on there, you know, that's going to be kind of more ordinary, more average, more mundane. But if you pop the hood and see a stack injection, that's kind of awesome. But let's take a look at one more test. While the Chevy stack injection looks awesome, and obviously in addition to that, it also adds power, that's really not the whole story for this thing. So we want to take a look at something else. One of the considerations when you're running a system like this, either the one from Speedmaster or there are others available from other people as well, and that is air filtration. <laughs> one of the problems with these setups, and we'll see in this test, we actually ran a test where we ran the screens that came with this setup. Now the screens are designed obviously to keep kind of big things out of there, uh, filters on these things would be even better, but you run into two problems when you're trying to get some sort of filtration with these stack injections. Is one is you can run a big base kind of like they do on some of these setups on trophy trucks and other forms of racing, where they house this these stacks inside a big common plenum or a big filter box, and then they have a big filter element to feed this, and that works very well. The problem is then you can't see it, and it's no longer this kind of sexy stack injection. Uh, the other way that people do it is they put individual filters on all these. And again, the nice thing about seeing this is having these radius air horns, which look awesome, obviously. And then there's another way to do it besides putting individual stacks on all of them, and that's to put these screens that are inside. So you can kind of see, still see the radius entries. But the problem with almost all of these setups, other than the big box that they use in some of the high levels of racing, here's what happened when we ran the screens on these before removing them. As you can see in red, um, equipped with the screens to basically reduce airflow, but also to keep big things out of there from entering their way and damaging your motor. Equipped with the screens, these the stack injection actually made very comparable power to the standard four barrel. It was up a little bit. Peak torque was up by about six foot pounds. Peak power was almost exactly the same. In fact, it was down by one horsepower or so. And you can see it even started to fall off out here past 56 or 5700 RPM. So the screens and the filtration that we'd use for these, if you do use them, take their toll. And if you decide not to and want to have them look good and also make good power, the other thing to think about is the fact that, well, we don't have any sort of filtration in there. How long are we going to be running them like that? So if you run without filters and you drive around a lot, now this is a cars and coffee kind of thing, you know, you can just probably go do that. But if you drive it around a lot, having unfiltered air going through the motor, there's a lot of dirt and debris just even in the air, and it makes the motor not last quite as long. The other thing to consider with these stack injections, and this is with any of them, is that um, tuning can sometimes become an issue. For us at Wide Open Throttle, very, very simple. Uh, you go to Wide Open Throttle, there's more than enough airflow for all the cylinders. It's fairly easy to get the throttle blades balanced enough because we're not using all of the airflow potential of all of these cylinders. So even if one of them is at... 98% or 97% throttle angle and it's not totally at 100 while the others that are 100, it's not really a big deal at wide open throttle. Where it becomes critical is at idle and part throttle. So if you, if you have a change in one of them that's 1 or 2% relative to the others, at the really, really um, low opening, that's a big, that's a big percentage change. So if they're only open 3% and one of them is open 2 or 1%, think about the percentage change. And it really plays havoc on the tune. You can get backfires and misfires and all kinds of stuff. You can get idle quality that's very erratic. So getting these things synced so that all the blades open and close at the same time oftentimes is really the Achilles heel of a lot of these uh, individual runner stack injections. Okay, guys, what did we learn from this comparison installing the Speedmaster stack injection on our mildly modified 350 small block Chevy? Well, we learned two things. First of all, it looks awesome. And this is really only the tip of the iceberg. There's a ton of stuff that you can do to the stack injection to make it even more individualized and even more awesome. I mean, I've seen guys like 
chrome plate these things. I've even seen guys gold plate these. So there's no limit. You can change the stack length. You can bend them and shape them, make them different lengths. You can do all kinds of things to basically make it your own, which is awesome. I like the fact that these things look great and they have a lot of eyeball, eyeball appeal, but a lot of guys will only put it on for that reason. But it's also nice to know that when you put these on, you also gain more power. So you really get both. Now, as I pointed out, stack injection is not without its problems. But despite that, lots of guys are going to run. It looks awesome and it makes power. I'm Richard Holder. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. More and more testing, including the Ford test on stack injection, coming up.